Hi, welcome to Layman's. My name is Amy, and today is March 14, otherwise known as Pie Day. So we're going to be making pie. Often when you think of pie, you think of dessert, but today we're talking main dish, pot pie. We're going to use some green beans that came right from our garden last fall. These came out of the freezer. Uh, we're filming this in February, and I asked my husband for some carrots, and he went out to the garden, which is also uh, covered with four inches of snow right now. And he dug up these carrots. So these are absolutely fresh carrots from our garden. This onion also came from our garden. This is the end of our onions for this season. So the last onion is going into our pot pie today. We have celery. We have peas from the grocery store. So don't feel like you have to grow your own vegetables. And also get super creative. Last week I made a pot pie. I used kale, I used spinach, I used mushrooms, but I know what my family likes. Then the other thing I have, usually when we talk about pot pie, we talk about chicken pot pie. This is actually turkey, but no one is going to know. Our Thanksgiving turkey was way too big. We deboned it, we chopped it up, and this came out of the freezer as well. So these are nice chunks of turkey that is gonna make our pot pie delicious. Now let's head over to the stove and we're gonna start cooking. We're gonna saute our onions and celery. I like to start with the hardest vegetables first. Add our carrots next. Give them a bit of a stir fry just till they're soft. Then our flour and our green beans and mix that thoroughly. We're gonna add our milk and our broth we're going to bring that to a boil, put the lid on, give it a rest till it's nice and thick. Turn the stove off, add our cold turkey and our frozen peas. Stir that and just let it cool down. We are ready to make our dough. Do not be intimidated by making pie dough. For some reason, that's the part that intimidates lots of people. On the other hand, if you make your own filling, maybe this is a good time to buy a ready-made crust and go with that the first time. I've already pre-measured two cups of flour and one teaspoon of salt. I like to use these Crisco bars. They're pre-measured and this recipe takes three-fourths of a stick of Crisco Okay, so we're just gonna, I like butter flavored Crisco. Uh, this happens to just be the regular, but it still is gonna be a wonderful flaky crust. So we're just gonna cube that into our food processor and we're gonna pulse it about four or five times. You don't want it blended. You actually want crumbs. You want us to see bits and pieces. You don't want it like Play-Doh. Depending on where you store your flour is how much water you need. Flour can actually, if it's in the summer and it's absorbing humidity, you're going to need less water. So that's why we say four to eight tablespoons. And I just pulse it while I add my water. And the best way to know if your dough is ready is the pinch test. So I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna pinch it, and if it holds together like that, it's perfect, it's ready. So you can see, I didn't use all of my water today. I'm just gonna dump it out, and I'm gonna form two balls because we're gonna have a double crust on our pot pie. At this point, I'm going to make two balls, then flatten them, sort of like a pancake, wrap them in plastic wrap, and refrigerate for about 30 minutes till it's cold. Now they're cold, and I'm going to roll them out. This is the first one. It will be my bottom crust. I'm using a cast iron skillet today. By Lodge, I like the way it heats evenly. I like to start 
in the middle of my dough and roll out, using plenty of flour to make sure it doesn't stick. Keep rolling out, rolling out, and turning it every now and then, adding flour just to make sure it won't stick. I can even measure how big I need to make it with my pan. I usually fold it in half and then unfold it once I get it in the pan, pressing down in all the corners of the pan. And then I'm going to trim off the excess dough that's hanging over. Pressing down. This is our filling, which has sufficiently cooled. I'm going to pack it in there. I want a lot of filling. And now my top crust, the same thing, using lots of flour, starting in the middle, rolling out, turning every now and then to make sure it's not going to stick. And my dough scraper is wonderful for helping make sure it doesn't stick either and it helps me to pick it up and transport it over to my pan. I'm going to tuck in all the edges and crimp the top all the way around, just between my finger and thumb. The last thing I will do is add an egg wash. Just beat one egg up with just a fork and spread it on the top of your pie crust. Make sure you get the whole way around. This adds a nice glossy touch. The final touch, I'm going to cut some vent holes so that we don't make a mess in the wood-burning cook stove. Amanda has the stove all ready for us. 400 degrees, she's going to put it in there. As you can see, our wood-burning cook stove you can put the logs in the front or on the top. After 15 minutes, Amanda is going to turn our pie just to make sure that it's cooking evenly. Looks pretty good. We get a bit of a peek at it. And she's going to show us how she can add logs to the top of our cook stove. Or your top if you want. Okay. Our pot pie is done, and we're going to serve it to our customers that are at the store today. Well, that was fun. The customers snatched up all the samples. I had to come home and make another one for my family. Hopefully, you're ready to try a new recipe. They'll all be attached at the end of this video. Thanks for joining us. Come and visit us sometime on the Square of Kidron. See you later.